Without a plan, revision might be stressful and lead to poor exam results. In this podcast, I guide students through one part of such a plan, study resources. First, we cover the theory for each topic, and then I suggest questions to practice acquired skills. Join me in making your exam experience a success story. A quick disclaimer. OpenAI's large-scale language generation tool ChatGPT may have been used to draft some content in this episode. StudySquare LTD has adapted the content and takes full responsibility for the publication. Okay, so let's have a look at subatomic particles. Atoms consist of electrons, neutrons, and protons that have charges of minus 1, 0, plus 1, and masses of approximately 0, 1, and 1, respectively. These properties are used to create formulae for finding the numbers of electrons, neutrons, and protons in various particles. For example, atoms have an equal number of electrons and protons, as the negative charge of electrons with a positive charge of protons results in them being neutral. Each element has its specific atomic number that is the same as the number of protons in an atom of the element. On the other hand, the number of electrons and neutrons can be different in particles, even if they are derived from the same elements. The number of electrons in an atom is the same as the atomic number of the element. The number of electrons in an ion is the atomic number of the element minus the charge of the ion. The number of neutrons in a monatomic particle is mass number or relative atomic mass minus the atomic number. When the relative atomic mass is known, it is commonly rounded to an integer to be used for these calculations. Sometimes, instead of the relative atomic mass, the mass number of a specific particle is given and is usually displayed as a superscript, just before the chemical symbol. The question that relates to this theory is, one of hydrogen isotopes has one proton in each of its atoms. How many protons does a twice heavier hydrogen isotope atom have? Now, if you want to access the solution and the answer for this question, use the link in the show notes. Do you know anyone who could benefit from listening to this episode? Share it with them. That's how we can support more students in preparing for their exams. Also, if you like listening to this podcast, it would be awesome if you left a five-star rating or a review. The next topic we're going to revise is relative atomic mass. Isotopes of an element are atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons, or alternatively atoms with the same atomic number but a different mass number. Most elements have multiple different isotopes with different atomic masses. To simplify mass calculations for a generic sample of an element, relative atomic mass is used. Relative atomic mass is a weighted average of atomic masses of naturally existing isotopes of an atom and is measured in grams per mole. Relative atomic mass is found by multiplying atomic mass by the abundance for each isotope, adding the results and dividing the sum by the sum of abundances. The abundances should usually add up to 100% or 1, meaning all isotopes are considered in a calculation. So let's see an example of a problem for this theory. Define isotopes. Now, if you want to access the solution and the answer for this question, use the link in the show notes. Now that we have covered the theory, it is time to practice solving related problems. So head to studysquare.co.uk forward slash resources and try answering questions on this topic. I hope you have a great week ahead. And until next time.